Hi, this is Mrs. Cat, and I am going to be walking through the answer key to our first chemical nomenclature assessment. I'm going to talk you through what I would do for each one of these processes. The very first side of this is all going to be ionic compounds. So that's going to mean we're going to be looking at a metal with a nonmetal, or we're going to have a polyatomic ion somewhere in our formulas. That means that we're going to have a compound that's made of an, an ion that is positively charged and negatively charged, and these are going to combine in a way that are always going to give us a neutral compound. Okay, so I'm going to use my blue periodic table to help me out here and look at my charges of my ions. I'm going to see that silver is going to be plus one because it's always plus one. Bromide is in group 17, so it's going to be a negative one. So one of each of those is going to go together to make a neutral compound, so AGBr. Vanadium 4 carbonate. I know that vanadium is going to have a plus four charge because of my Roman numeral. I can see on my periodic table in my ion chart that carbonate is CO3 with a minus two charge. One of each of those together is not going to be neutral overall. I'm going to need two carbonates to give me a total of minus four. So I'm going to have V parentheses CO3 2 as my answer there. Okay. Lithium iodide Li plus I minus. I can figure that out based on their location on the periodic table. Lithium's in group one, it's gonna be plus one charge. Lith iodide is in group 17, it's gonna be a minus one charge. Okay, now again, we've got a Roman numeral on this next one, cobalt three oxide. So that means cobalt's gonna be plus three. Oxide's in group 16, it's gonna have a minus two charge. Those are not gonna be equal if I combine one of each. This is a little bit of a tricky one when we've got two and three as our charges, we want to make them both equal to six, which means I'm going to need two cobalts with a plus three charge and three oxygens with a minus three charge. Okay. Make sure that those formulas are always going to be neutral there. Now, when I'm looking at my formulas into my names, remember the end name of an element is always going to change to IDE. If you've got a polyatomic ion, we're going to name it as is. If we've got a transition metal that can have more than one possible charge, like our tin does here, we're going to use our negative ion to help us figure out what that charge is going to be. So I know this is going to be tin, so I'm going to go ahead and write that, and I'm going to figure out what that charge is based on the charge of the selenide ion or the selenium. It's going to have a charge of minus two, so that means if I have two of those, the total negative charge is four. I need a total of plus four to make this whole thing neutral. There's only one 10, so that 10 has to be a plus four charge. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Roman numeral there. The selenium, I'm going to change to selenide. Change that ending to IDE. My next one, I've got three atoms, three types of atoms, which means I've got a polyatomic ion. This is NH4, that's ammonium which I can find on my polyatomic ion chart. The chlorine is going to change to chloride. Oh, if I can spell it right, it will. L-O-R-I-D-E. Okay, this next one here, we also have, whoa, another polyatomic ion that we're going to be looking at. This one is going to be the, and we also have a transition metal that has more than one charge. Our polyatomic ion is going to be the SO4. If you look on our chart, that's sulfate, and it's going to have a charge of minus 2. I'm going to go ahead and write that sulfate down as part of my name. And then I know I'm going to have lead, and I need to figure out which version of that lead is. If I have two lead or two sulfates, excuse me, I'm going to have a total of minus 4 charge, which means my lead has to be plus 4 in order to make that one neutral overall. Similar situation on this last one. We've got another one with a polyatomic ion and a transition metal. So I know that Fe is going to be iron. Maybe I can get this to write. And then I know that NO3 is nitrate, and I know that by looking at my chart of polyatomic ions, I can also see that this is going to have a minus one charge. So if there's two of those, that's minus two altogether which means to make this neutral, that one iron has to be plus two. The second section of this um, side of our assessment, 
looks at incorrectly written ionic formulas. So we're going to correct these. These are all incorrect because they are not neutral as they are written. So what I want to do is start out by finding what the ion charges of each of these should be. Barium is going to be plus two. Fluorine is going to be minus one. So that's my issue right there. Okay, I don't need two bariums. I need two fluorines. So if I have one barium plus two, I need two F minuses to make that neutral overall. Okay, similar situation here. I've got aluminum. That's going to be three plus. But then I have this polyatomic ion, which is CN minus. That's cyanide. It's got a charge of minus one. So the trouble here is not that we have the wrong numbers. The trouble here is that we're missing parentheses because what we want is three cyanide ions. We don't want three nitrogen atoms. And then we've got, to round us out, another polyatomic ion, that NH4+, plus, that's the ammonium, plus one. And then the sulfur is minus two, which means we need two ammonium ions. That's going to be NH4 in parentheses with the two, and then the S to make that one balanced out. All right, number three on this side, we're going to look at the ions, a particle diagram, name, and formula for tin chloride. Now, tin has two different forms. Tin can be tin plus two or, or tin plus four. So I'm going to start out with writing my ions. Whoops, that one needs to be plus four. Those are our two different versions of tin. And then our chlorine is going to be, our, our chloride is going to be a Cl minus. Okay. Now, I'm going to do this kind of out of order. I'm going to go ahead and write my chemical formula and my name before I do my particle diagram, number of atoms and number of ions. So if tin is plus two and Cl is minus one, I need two of those minus charges to balance that out to make it neutral. This is going to be my tin two chloride. Same thing for my other form, but instead of having a plus two, I've got a plus four, which means I need twice as many chlorines. That's going to be SnCl4, whoops. And so this is going to be tin four chloride. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw my particle diagram. I'm going to color code mine to make it a little bit easier. Um, let's see here. Let's do maybe blue for our tin. I'm going to need one of each of those. And then they're going to have different charges. This one's going to be plus two. This one's going to be plus four. And then maybe I'll do green for my negative charges. Now remember, positive and negatives attract, so we want them to be on opposite sides because like charges repel. Maybe I go something like this, one, two, three, four negatives on my tin four chloride. Now when we're counting up the number of ions, the number of atoms, we want to look at different things. Number of ions is going to be the number of charged particles. This can be one monatomic ion or it could be a polyatomic ion. The number of atoms is just the total number of atoms. Now, these are going to be the same if you do not have a polyatomic ion, which is what we have here. So if we take a look at what we've got, I can count. There's one, two, three atoms all together. All three of those atoms have a charge, so I also have three ions. In my other picture, I've got one, two, three, four, five atoms. Each one of them has a charge, so we have a total of five ions. Okay. Ionic names and formulas and particle diagrams are trickier than our covalent or molecular ones that we have on the other side, and that's because we always have to consider those charges. When we're looking at our covalent compounds, these are going to have nonmetals only. The other thing we need to know is that there are no charges here. You should see this because if you try to use charges, you're going to see that they're all going to be negative. That's why we use our prefixes when we name and write these formulas. So going from name to formula is really easy. The prefixes tell you how many. Sulfur tetrachloride is SCl4. Silicon dioxide is SiO2. 
And then phosphorus triiodide is going to be PI3. We're going the opposite direction. Our prefixes tell us um, in our names how many we had in our formula. The only exception for this is if you have one atom at the beginning of your compound, we do not use mono at the beginning. So into F4, this is going to be dinitrogen. Four is tetra. So this is going to be tetrafluoride. Same rules apply as we have with ionics. If the element name um, is at the end, you're going to change the ending to IDE. O2, F2 is going to be dioxygen, difluoride. And then finally of these, we've got ClF3. This is going to be chlorine, trifluoride. Okay. Last but not least, we've got our same chart. Only difference here is we are looking at the particle diagram and um, all of our pieces for phosphorus trichloride. So I'm going to start with my formula, and that's going to be PCl3, which means this is going to be the combination of phosphorus and chlorine. Notice there are no charges. I'm going to go ahead and do my particle diagram. Let's see here. Maybe we'll do this color for phosphorus, and then maybe this color. Whoops, I don't want that. Try again. Maybe this color for chlorine, maybe one, two, three. I don't really care how these are attached as much, but I do care that they don't have any charges. So we're going to have Cl, Cl, Cl. This gives us a total of four atoms, but none of these have charges, so we don't have any ions. You will never have any ions in a molecular or a covalent formula. So um, that's a rundown of how I would do everything on our nomenclature quiz number one. Please make sure that if you have any additional questions, you reach out to me or to your teacher, and good luck on your next rounds.